I really want to thank you for joining me here. I am Pooja. I work with Mo Engage. A brief about me is not so brief. Um, I, uh, after years of trying to find out about myself, I figured out one word which explains me more is I am an explorer. I have explored a lot of things, um, but I am yet one of those, one of you uh, who still feels that I have a lot to explore more. In work, I had been a developer, a QA, an automation engineer, and now trying to double with uh, DevOps and TechOps terms. Uh, uh, in personal, uh, I am a foodie and sleep lover, but loving yoga m makes me uh, uh, makes me in a situation when nobody can find out that these are my hobbies. Uh, coming to the work, uh, I am coming to the work. Sorry, uh, I am. Uh, I work with more engage, and at work, I strive to bridge the gaps between all of my teams. And with that mindset, I lead a team QA. And currently actively focusing on building automated systems which can improve the collaboration across the teams and help us build, shape the healthier product. Uh, along with the work, I am an open source lover. With that interest, whichever project I use for my work, I make sure to contribute back to it. My recent contributions can be found in Jenkins and automation related plugins. Coming back to the talk today, I am going to introduce you to one of our special team member. Her name is Alice, and I can see some faces glowing. Uh, sorry uh, for keeping you hopes up. She is a bot. Yes, so we are going to go on a small crisp ride to meet Alice, starting from why Alice took birth to what all it can do and the how a part of it, the ingredients and recipes, how we cooked it, followed by the demo and Q&A at, at, at the end. So are you guys with me so far? Uh, Alice needs more voices, yes? All right, so we're going to start with why. I take you to one of our typical release days conversation. So just try to mem uh, 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 recall your release days to understand it better. It's 9 o'clock in the morning, 10 o'clock you have decided to release it, and all of a sudden, a road blocker comes. So here is one of our team members named Karna, who is, who is coming running, hey Draupadi, something is broken and you are about to release, uh, can you just fix, figure it out? And here is Draupadi, who is one of the QA members, who was super sure last night that it was working. And she's like, no, it cannot be, and she panics and, and says that, okay, let's try it try to talk to Beam, who, ha who, who was the developer of that feature. Beam, on the other hand, has the general notion because, hey, I God swear, I did not touch this from a year now. How can it be me? Right? And same time seeing the situation, Krishna, who is the CTO, joins the discussion and say, hey guys, just settle down, try to find the bucket commit, and let's revert that commit and move ahead. Now Arjuna has to come and do the dharma. And the dharma is go to the GitHub and try to find out all pull requests find, and find the commits which, which was buggy. It is going to take time. A lot of pull requests has been merged now. Seeing this, Vishma Vitama, who is a DevOps, Vishma Vitama, who is a DevOps, gets the uh, clear uh, Confusion like, oh no, we cannot release now because it's going to be peak hours for our customers. So let's just postpone the release. And you know now, this rush to uh, being helpless, they have to say, no, we cannot postpone. We have planned and we have committed deadlines. What do you do? So I want to know how many of you feel the same pain which I just described. Hands are raising, thinking that bosses are not sitting around. <laughs> yeah, yes. So yeah, same thing happened. Uh, and if that happens, what do you think, what do you feel uh, end up with seeing this situation? What do you call this? Blame game? Okay, we don't like to use negative words, but we say that some kind of conflicts wherein people are not able to move ahead because of so and so or whatever reason is. And when that happens to you, what do you want to do immediately? This? And you feel, no, there should be some way. I also felt that. 
And that's where we figured out what all problems we are seeing are just the symptoms. The problems, the root causes are beneath. And we wanted to really work on the black area, which we are seeing here, the black area, but the problems which we were not able to figure out till then. And that's where I take you, from now, I'll take you to the problems one by one and the solutions which Alice brings in. But before that, let's understand how a typical code flow happens in our organization to uh, give you a better understanding. So here is our uh, developers who uh, write codes in their own branches and pushes to GitHub. And from there, they raise a pull request, which goes to the developer branch. From there, they raise pull request to a test branch. We call it QA in our context. And from there, we decide that this is a code freezed, and QA team will be testing only on this, so that uh, no confusion happens. And when everything goes right here, we move it to master, and we take the release from here. So what we figured out is, the, the root causes were among uh, were, were within this area. This area, which we, we called it is a sensitive area, and all the branches be, within, we call it sensitive, sensitive branches. The test and master. So we figured out if we could put some kind of way to monitor this, we could resolve those problems. So. To look at this problem, again, I went back. So the developer inside me told that Beam was right. He did not touch from an year now. Uh, it, should he leave his current work and check that? Yes, we don't want to lose the productivity. And as a QA, I come, come in, uh, as a QA, I feel the same. Whoever bug it is, I just want a solution to take it ahead. And same as the DevOps. And finally, the automation engine inside me comes out and try to bridge the gaps between all this and say that, hey, this communication problem is also repetitive in nature. It's happening every release. Can we do automation around it? Can we do automation of monitoring these sensitive branches? So I take you from here. Uh, the how part, what are the problems, and how Alice solves it. So for example, the very first problem, the last moment panic attacks comes because of we are somehow taking the unreviewed commits inside the system. And that's where Alice says that, hey, do not let them go inside. So uh, in at present scenario, GitHub has launched the approval and review, pro review feature of it, but when we started, it was not there. So we started with this. And uh, still, uh, it has its own meaning. I'll take you that, to that in demo section again. So whenever such thing happens, whenever somebody merges the code without the code, code review, what Alice does is it auto-reverts it immediately informing people. So we are using, for communication, we are using Slack, and for cl code collaboration, we are using GitHub. So we, uh, Alice knows and parses and finds out who, what is wrong and reverts back. Second problem, no quick record. So we saw that that was Arjun who has to go through all the PRs and find out, and it was him all the time. So could we make it more uh, understood by every member in the team? And that's where we decided we will have a, per a permanent channel uh, for each repository we have, and Alice keeps recording for all the events happening in the sensitive branches. So for us, merge was the sensitive event, and uh, the branches were QA, Dev, and master. So Alice, sorry. Yeah, so Alice does this. So looking at this, we can come to know if, if let's say I'm a QA engineer and I have to approach if this, this feature was working two hours back and it doesn't work anymore now, I do not need to uh, just alert channel, hey, ch everyone check this. I have an understanding, okay, these two pull requests probably, I can check and who is the author, I can actually discuss with them. And it eases up everybody's task and uh, in that sense. So whoever has committed within that timeline, they can see and quickly fix this. Next problem, no danger boat. So, 
Mistakes are prone to happen. Accident can happen if you don't put the danger boards. And that's where Alice says that, hey, be proactive and put the danger boards. For example, uh, this feature we introduced for DevOps especially. So we found that there were some machine level, DB level changes which people were doing and missing, forgetting to inform DevOps team. And that's where we decided, okay, how to not repeat it. And one of those examples is this. So whenever some sensitive files getting touched by someone in one of those sensitive branches, Alice comes and rewards, informs respect to the ops team, hey, this is being changed. So if the ops has to check that and whatever they want to do, they can do it afterwards. One of those examples is this also. So we say that from we will take release only from the QA branch, not from the any other branch. So we uh, Alice, we in the sense Alice does is what whenever somebody creates a pull request from some other branch, random branch to master, Alice auto closes it immediately. So we are saving our time of uh, mistakenly merging wrong PRs and then uh, reverting the code again. Lack of awareness. So this is one of the one uh, where Alice got uh, more feathers in its hat is. Alice says that, hey, uh, people have a tendency to forget how to keep reminding them. And that's where he says that, keep me posted. So Alice posts for multiple things. For example, uh, Alice, the, the moment you, as a developer, merge some code into some special branch, Alice reports, hey, you have merged this and so and so and this. Now be nice and just uh, mention it in the release notes. So the, it, it helps QA team to uh, uh, the, derive the bandwidth when they can release, and others also have the clarity of the things. Next is this. So whenever we are about to release, we want to inform all. This is the auto alert Alice sends. Hey, we are about to uh, release, especially to tech leads. If something is missing or something they want to add up just before release, they, can, they are aware. This is one of very interesting thing. I myself has done this mistake a lot of times. Uh, we took release live without JS update, and we all know what happens. So it was for five minutes, my RUI was not afflicted, and people are trying to find out what went wrong. It was just the forgetfulness. So we decided, okay, whenever somebody merges to the release or master branch, Alice immediately pings, hey, did you fill this checklist? If this checklist is not filled, DevOps doesn't take the release live, or whoever the release engineer is. No automated guide. Uh, so we were uh, around 20 in engineers when we when I joined Moengate, and we exponentially, exponentially uh, um, increased to around 40 engineers. And telling everybody, uh, educating everybody about the process was becoming tedious task for me. And that's where I saw, I saw a full potential of including automated guide. So bring the talking bot. So I'll come to the tech inside how we are doing. So you just ask Alice about the system. It knows everything about that system. From static replies to dynamic to giving it, giving it a task. For example, hey Alice, give me release notes, it reverts. Hey Alice, how do I take my patch live? It reverts the instructions. What do you need to do? Hey Alice, dynamic, hey Alice, start my machine. It goes and triggers whoever is responsible to start that machine. Hey Alice, get me the branch name. So if I'm a product manager or somebody else who do not want to go into all details of SSH to machine and finding out what code is being deployed, I, that's very handy for that person. Alice reports back. Now coming to the tech behind. It's no magic. It was all here. But what it took me to do it was connect these starts. There were GitHub APIs, Slack APIs, Report APIs, and Jenkins. So I really want to appreciate Jenkins community completely because all the ideas I got from there to automate things. And how we did this, so we have GitHub uh, repository, and each repository has a webhook mechanism from GitHub, wherein whenever you merge a pull request, there is an event triggered. And this event triggers Alice. So there is a full payload of there's a full payload um, of uh, pull request which Alice parses and says, uh, does the particular action, the business logic. Business logic can be pushing back to Slack. Business logic can be talking to talking bot, Hubot. And 
gel canes. So these all are interconnected to do whatever, uh, whoever is best as doing what task. They are just interconnected with the main source code called Alice. So let's have a look, quickly have a look at demo. So for simplicity, I have uh, kept one. Is it visible? No? Okay, now? It's somehow not increasing. Someone is operating my laptop. Seriously? Okay. No, it was a joke. I had a dem demo recorded. Okay, so coming back. So I have uh, one commit ready, and I say this. I create a commit. Rootcon live from rootcon 17, and I say create pull request. The moment I do, Alice does multiple tasks. Do you see? Immediately the guideline has come. The respective person has to do. Now people will have conflict. This we can do in the contribution, uh, uh, probably with GitHub only. Uh, but I I'll come to it also, why we needed this. Because for different branches, we wanted to do different checklists. The moment you see this, uh, there is a Slack channel. Uh, for simplicity, I have created a Slack channel to show you. So here is a repo code. It has got the entry. Hey, this is being, this in this repo, this is being, opened by this, et cetera, et cetera, details. And if you see, yeah. So if you see this, I'm sorry. So if you see this, I have definitely created um, a change in the file, which has a rule of, if this file is changed, product plus one is essential. And which, which that rule says that, okay, if this in, is being merged without the product team approval, this should be either rejected or being informed. So I merge this commit. Let's see what happens in the channel. You see, it says that, hey, Puja, this is merged without a product plus one. In one go, I got this detail. And there is one more entry in the repo card, which we saw, the common tr place to trash back. It gives the entry, okay, this is being merged. So now, Alice has all the trace, trace back. So if, if a person wants to know what, are, what were being merged, they will come to this channel. And release channel is especially to inform, to take actions if it has to be reverted back or automatically revert back. So you can uh, set the rules or deselect the rules in Alice for that purpose. Now coming to the talking bot, let's talk to Alice. I can ask Alice, I can invite Alice as a user in my Slack channel, and I can say that, no, it's not Alice, it's not Alice. <laughs> okay, so I can say, hey Alice, uh, how to take my patch live. So if it knows, it reverts. If it doesn't know, it say, I don't know. And hey, Alice, you can say, uh, what is branch on my one of my machine? It goes to that machine. This is a dynamic reply. It goes to that machine and reverts back. And if you feel that this is too much noise uh, in channel, you can directly talk to Alice. Alice is here. You can directly ask Alice, hey, uh, hey, Alice, when is the next release? These are the dynamic feeder data, which one of the QA teams probably can feed, or the release team can feed. And you can go more in depth and say, hey, and what are the release items? It goes and finds out whatever is being feeded, either static or in a file wherever uh, automatically you can write from the merge event. You can do whatever, however you wish to. So, and, and if you're getting bored, you can just ask, hey, get me a cup of coffee. So, uh, things like that. So, you, the idea is you can do, uh, you can do static, dynamic, or sort of things. Coming back to the talk, 
Yes. So we saw that it can solve multiple problems. So we can control uh, and say that, hey, Alice, do this. So I saw DevOps engineers especially having a trouble like my morning 5 o'clock or 4 o'clock they have to wake up and log into the laptop and deploy some script on some machine, run some scripts. This can be very handy. They can just feed in, okay, go to this machine and do that. You can connect the Jenkins or other CI things with it. And at the same time, you also want to ensure that nobody else can do it. In Alice, you can do those authentication systems. You can say that, hey, do only if it's me. And you can also say, hey, Alice, be more intelligent. For example, I have seen DevOps team suffering this, uh, uh, like not suffering, uh, uh, having this common question again, is my release deployed on that particular server? Or what is the my, what are the all release on that particular server? You can just have this kind of setup critically. So whenever release is going uh, from whatever branch, that push event, you can save the data from there. Uh, whenever machine, sorry, whichever machine the release is going, the DevOps have their, their own way of scripting finding out all the uh, server details, and that can be pushed in one file, which Alice can keep reverting each release. And this is one of the interesting things which we did, uh, because I did not want to be a grandmother, so I did not want to tell everybody every time that this is a code phrase, we are not going to take more items out of this, et cetera, et things so we did. Uh, in, we feed it in Alice. Whenever code freeze happens from dev to test branch, it automatically reverts. It has all the entries, what is being merged till, during that period, and it gives the quick details. People can see, okay, is my code there? Is getting tested? And QA teams can plan their bandwidth. Future. So what do you think, what can be the future? Apart from this, whatever is written. <laughs> It's immense, right? There's no single word. You can code whatever you want to. But what immediate future I am seeing is the continuous integration. The reason is simple, because continuous integration uh, requires all is the, the code commit data. And Alice already have that. All it needs to do is run some checks and move it to the next staging server. So that is what I'm working on. Probably will be there. Code right soon, it's coming soon. And some faces are like, you gotta be kidding. Yes, I'm kidding, it's not coming soon, it's all that is there. We have open sourced it, and you can try, and if you like, star it, fork it, uh, contribute back to it. I feel I would love to know more stories around what problems Alice solved for you. And with that, uh, I want to give credit to a lot of people here. Uh, mostly the problems at work and going to the uh, coming to the APIs and the photo credits also I want to give to the unsplash Google in GP uh, <coughs> sorry so uh, to summarize this we started with solving one problem that was people were merging the unreviewed commits we started with one problem and we, we gradually we learned in the process that Alice could do much more Behind, beyond that. So you, now I hope you have idea uh, about solving your own specific problems in, no, in a more automated way, and an idea how the future Alice will look like. With that, I appreciate your time. Thank you. So I'm, I'm open for q and A. I can take a few questions. Yeah, hi. All right, so um, I saw your uh, checklist for developers uh, before uh, the merge is uh, yeah. done, right? Um, I know the developer's mindset is like, I want it to be merged right now. Just click the box and merge it. Now, how long have you uh, implemented this checklist? How effective has it been? Yes, so, uh, so checklist we started uh, using for uh, our own remembrance. So the first checklist which I shown in the slides, if you remember, that was for the release checklist. That's for sure we are taking care of it because we already did that mistake, right? So for release checklist, it's not, not a problem. Everybody follows it because it, and then release things will go wrong. Now, developer checklist. Developer checklist, yes, it is hard to implement, but uh, 
it's like it's like it's, uh, there are people who actually do not want to miss things they just miss because they forgot so for them it is very beneficial and for whom who after seeing also do not want to do that's where continuous integration is coming in so we do not allow the we do not enable the merge button itself until those things are done was it, why, was i able to answer this yeah any more So actually, the thing is, uh, we have one bot uh, named Hogbot. Uh, so we have integrated with the Jenkins. But the thing is, my Slack user and the Jenkins user might be different. So I'll you control the credential things. Can you? Uh, it's simple. So I created a Jenkins. Uh, like, what do you want to solve with that? Actually, what I want to control is like uh, we have production deploy through Jenkins. So. I want to lock we are triggering the bin. So Slack user might be the different one. And the same user might have the different username for the thinking. So how can you think up the things? Uh, so answer is uh, yes or no, you want to do that or not. So for us, uh, if I, I can create same name as Alice, nobody gets to know about it. <laughs> But, but what if the uh, internal user authentication? The username? Yeah, internal authentication. When you want to do for that users, uh, whatever user you have created, you can do for that. There is no need to make everybody everywhere Alice. You just can name Alice internally for that specific user token. You can authenticate. Okay, only this user token should be allowed to do perform a particular task. But then you will not able to lock that whoever is triggering the build. Whoever so is getting the build, I didn't get. Suppose uh, I have a bot. Mm -hmm. Anyone can send the message to the bot. So yeah. I have to log it in the Alice, not in the Jenkins. Okay. So what if I want to do it at the Jenkins, love, Jenkins level? So everything, what so your Jenkins, message... So Jenkins triggers a call, uh, uh, sorry, Alice triggers a call, call to, to Jenkins, Jenkins to yeah. perform certain tasks. And Jenkins, in Jenkins, in post build, we have written reverts back to Slack. So we know that who did what. It's never, it's never open-ended that it's, it's, it's not never open-ended that just do this. In Jenkins, we have al always written a, a post Slack call to revert back and saying that, hey, I did this on this particular server. So people get to know. It's not like he, uh, somebody personally talks to Alice and do something, no. So that way we are handling. Yes, hi. Mm -hmm. uh, can you help me a little more to understand this question? What do you mean by phases here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, okay, I get, I get it. So, uh, so with Hubot, uh, one thing is when you interact via Alice through Hubot, Hubot has a scripting. It's called Coffee Script. It's 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 just like a JavaScript and uh, rich in. Uh, you, all you need to write is more of a regular expressions there. So, probably uh, it's like it the the more rich regular expressions you write, it becomes more natural language there. So people do not need to mug up or remember commands. They will just say plain English, I want to start this machine. Then Alice will understand, okay, which command to hit against it. People will come with, with plain, completely plain English. You just need to say, in or whoever joins new in, you just need to say, hey, just talk to Alice. They will figure out. So that's how I have improved in my, writing my own regex. I used to give to people. So that's where um, uh, it came up with more natural style of write, uh, understanding. Okay, so we are cutting down questions. Speakers will be available outside. You can talk to them later, and we'll have a QA session as well. 
Thank you all. Thank you for timing. I'm all around here. Uh, I would love to chat if you have something in mind and some ideas, more ideas you, you have to implement in Alice. Come talk to me. Thank you.